All right, we did it. We traded John Tavares. I never thought this day would come. Yet another Game 7 loss to the Bruins. You hate to see it, boys. You just hate to see it. What's going on guys and welcome back to your Toronto Maple Leafs franchise mode. In the last episode, let me tell you about the last episode. It was a doozy. We ended up getting past the first round, which was great. Everyone's happy about that. We took care of the Florida Panthers. It wasn't a super easy series, but we did get by. And then we had the Boston Bruins. Three straight overtime games, two overtime losses in a row. We forced a game seven and then we fall apart one goal behind that's it all we needed was one goal just to tie it up they ended up getting a late one and we are out in the second round now this video is going to be a little bit crazy but at the end of last video we ended up getting rid of our coach reese moore he gone reese moore is no longer the head coach we gave jeremy gore six million bucks six million loonies to come to toronto to be our new head coach now he's an offensively minded head coach which i initially really wanted so i'm happy about that we're not going to sit here and talk about all the negativity. Daniel, he says it was an incredibly tough division this year. Each time it was basically evenly matched. At least it wasn't like a 90 point team. Just had some bad luck at the end. Each game was pretty close as well. You know what, Daniel? You're right. I can't be that negative. We still had a very successful year, but we're going into year number four. It's basically do or die at this point. There's a lot of comments telling me what to do. Ninja Hurdle, he says the only logical thing is to trade for one of the greatest players to end ever lace them up. And with that being said, I believe it's time to bring Ty Ronning to the six. Oh man, well I'm not gonna do that, but just for fun, just for fun, let's have a look at uh, what Ty Ronning's up to. I don't know if he's made the Rangers in year number three, headed into year number four. He's a 78, so it looks like he's a bubble player, having a very good year in the American Hockey League. How you doing? 71 points in 76 games. Maybe he'll make the jump. Definitely have to look at that coming up here in the next couple years if he does make the Rangers. But no, I'm not going to get Ty Ronning. Brandon Berenfeld, he says, since you have hired an offensively minded coach, it's imperative that you try to acquire players to fit his scheme. That being said, I think getting a legitimate second line winger to play with John Tavares and Will Nye, the hockey guy, Chris Kreider is better suited for a third line when it really comes down to it. So whether a trade or free agency, a left winger, 86 overall or higher, should be a Maple Leaf this season. Now that's all fine and dandy. Trust me, that's all I've ever wanted. But you look at our cap situation and let me tell you about my cap situation we're gonna have just over 20 million dollars to go ahead and re-sign Morgan Riley who wants 11 million dollars we're gonna have three players on our team making 11 million dollars or more Tavares Matthews and Riley thank God Mitch Marner took some sort of a pay cut we also have to re-sign Timothy Liljegren what's he gonna want five he wants five 5.7. So there goes a lot of our money right there. We've got to re-sign Timoshoff. He's going to be relatively cheap, which is great for a third-line scorer. Uh, Zach Hyman, Derek Forbort, Nick Baptiste, all these guys are cheap. I'm not too worried about that. What I am worried about is Philip Grubauer. What's he going to want? 4.5 for 6. So he had one good year. He's looking to cash in. I mean, it makes sense that he'd want a six-year deal, 30 years old, going to want that stability. But my thought here here. Now hear me out. We have one more comment to go over and this is from Ben. Trade all the young players who won't make the team like Rasmus Sandin along with as many picks as possible to get a high overall guy who's still on their entry level contract. Yeah that's way harder than it actually sounds. That way you aren't taking on a lot of cap. It makes sense. While you're getting a young excellent player with room to grow and you aren't sacrificing your cap window. And Cole says yep seconded. Well, my friend, that's much harder to do than you would think. But, this is a big but. What if we trade, I know it's not going to be a popular one, John Tavares. Now hear me out, before you yell at me, before you yell, calm down. That's $11 million off the books. That is a second line center and a really good second line winger. You get two for the price of one. 
And John Tavares, he should be a first-line center. He's getting second-line minutes, and it's not hurting his production. He's still basically a point-per-game player. However, he might be a 100-point player if he plays on the first line. Now, I know, I know, John Tavares, he's going to be a Maple Leaf for the rest of his career. We know that in real life, all right? We know that. But in the video game right now, we have some tough choices to make. The way I see it, we could get John Tavares and still have a 92 overall second line center. And I get you got to have a great one-two punch down the middle. I understand that. But he's making $11 million, my friends. 11! 11, 11 million bucks! All right, so say we go to, now just a team I had in mind off the top of my head. I haven't pre-scouted this. Let's go to New Jersey, all right? And let's have a look at, where is he? Nico Heischer. He's making 6.6. .6. Right there is a great second line center. Maybe won't have the point per game prowess that John Tavares has, but you get a guy who's gonna get you 30 and 40. I can't really complain about that on your second line. I would really like a guy like Nico Heischer. Plus, Jack Hughes, I mean, he might be ready for the first line but they could always play him on the wing they have a lot of different options here in new jersey but that's kind of how i feel we could get a guy like nico heischer and then have an extra five and a half million to work in free agency like it just it seems like it makes sense to trade one of our big guys like even guy like philip heidel for god's sake the guy's gonna get you 60 points 86 overall he's making peanuts that's the best contract in the nhl even a guy like Jake Gensel would be a fantastic option. I know he kind of plays the wing in Pittsburgh, but that would be just a phenomenal option. Even on the wing would be great. I would love to get Jake Gensel. Now, this is nothing against John Tavares. This is simply a cap situation. This is nothing against John Tavares. This is simply just a cap move. 11 million bucks is a ton. And I'd rather have a second line center, a second line winger, and a starting goalie than just have John Tavares. Because right now we just have John Tavares. We're not gonna be able to re-sign Philip Grubauer. Like we're really gonna be at the cap here. So I'm not saying we're gonna do it, but that seems like the most logical thing to do simply because Austin Matthews is not going anywhere. William Nylander is on a great contract. I don't wanna trade him. Mitch Marner is worth every penny of his 8 million bucks. Quite frankly, he might be underpaid to be honest with you. Gabriel Landeskog, I mean, it's a lot to pay, but, but he does bring a lot to the table. But I think that John Tavares, unfortunately, might be the odd man out, which sounds weird, but in order to keep us still, you know, a contending team, we might have to shed that cap. We go get Nico Heischer at, what is he making, six? Six million bucks? That means we have another five million dollars in free agency. Like, that just makes a lot of sense. Let's see what the draft holds for us though. Not gonna say I'm gonna do anything crazy, but I mean, it might be something to take a look at. So it looks like the number one pick is going to be Jacques. I think it's Bulmadine or Bulmadini. Uh, he had an absolutely insane year in the queue. 112 points, 320 shots. How are ya? We have Abel Ganey or Abel Ganey. Uh, he had, again, a fantastic year, 119 points. So either way, you're going to get a guy who's going to produce. And then you got Christoph Kolzig and then Braden Goodbranson. So two defensemen after the two studs up front. Now, Arizona has the first overall pick, so let's see what this guy's looking like. Medium franchise. Whew! 81 overall. God damn! That is looking like a hell of a selection there. Alright, so let's see what the top five was looking like, and then we'll make our selection. Again, the drafts don't really matter, but right now would be a good time maybe to move Tavares and a first because we don't need this first, and we're kind of going all guns blazing here to win the Stanley Cup. So let me take a couple timeouts here. We have 12 minutes to figure out what we're going to do. Let me have a look here. So Ganey is medium elite, Kolzig's medium elite, and then it kind of drops off there. Looks like that good Branson. Ooh, wow, they had the fifth overall pick as well. So they get a stud forward, like a franchise guy, and then they get a stud defenseman as well. Not a bad draft at all, Arizona. Not bad at all. All right, so 
So let me have a look around the league. Let's see what's out there for second line centers to trade for John Tavares. I know it sounds weird, trust me. If we kind of get to give Tavares a, you know, a legitimate shot at being a second line center. Um, so the way I see it here is you get two players for the price of one pretty much. Let's see what, ooh, he's got a ton of trade value. 6.6 .6 million, so it is a decent amount to pay, but that's second line center money. 11 million isn't second line center money. No way. Like, here's kind of a trade that I'm thinking of. Jesper Bratt and Nico Heischer. So this is less than $11 million. Can everyone do math? Getting two players for the price of one. Now, Jesper Bratt isn't that flashy, you know, 86, 87 overall guy. But he's making $3.7 million, a great contract. He's a Swede, so you know he's never made a bad choice in his entire life. He's still going to get you 60-plus points, back-to-back -back years of 50-plus. I mean, he's only 23 84 overall this might get the job done this is kind of what i'm thinking we, we get two needs right away brat and nico heischer we could have a line of william nylander jesper brat and nico heischer down the middle now nico heischer is a legitimate stud in the nhl 23 years old just a kid but had a fantastic year this year 35 goals playing him with william nylander like Oh man, what is Nico Heischer? Nico Heischer is from Switzerland, so we could have two Swedes and a Swiss on the second line. After we have an American, a Canadian, and another Swede on the top line with Landy, Marner, and obviously Austin Matthews. But this is kind of my thought behind it, but I don't want to jump on the first thing that I see, so I'm going to have a look around the league, see if there's anyone else, see if there's anyone else hanging out here uh, that could use John Tavares. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of teams, but I would never give them to like the New York Islanders. They don't need John Tavares. It's kind of funny that I chose the Islanders as an example, but they don't need him. I mean, they have Matthew, they have Matthew Barzell, they have their stud number one guy. The Devils, I mean, Jack Hughes is still a few years away from being that 90 plus first line center, at least a year anyways. So that's kind of makes sense and it does make a lot of sense for us even a guy like Mika Zibanejad however his contract does expire this year I'm sure he's going to want at least like seven and a half million bucks the thing I like about Jesper Brad is that he's cheap and he's effective I really like that about him Ricard Raquel might not be a bad option however his contract does expire he's going to want a whole bunch of money and fun fact about Ricard Raquel he was involved in a trade with the Leafs that well it wasn't him it was his draft rights I believe it was the pick that became Ricard Raquel, I have to look it up actually, hold on. It was the Thomas Caberlet trade. Draft rights traded from the Boston Bruins with Joel Colburn. So it was originally a Boston pick. It's kind of thrown all over the place, but, but he could have been a Leaf, but no. They traded away Thomas Caberlet, and that was a big giant disaster. Give the Coyotes three years, watch out for these guys, holy. A guy like Tyson Jost makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to send, you know, John Tavares to the Colorado Avalanche. Plus, we've made a million trades with the Avs and already have all their old players. Cole Perfetti, legend! I think the original trade here, John Tavares and a first for Jesper Bratt and Nico Heischer. I think I'm gonna do it, boys. We're gonna get rid of the $11 million cap, but it's like we're taking on 10.5, but we're getting two players. The trade just makes sense. John Tavares, I know the pajamas, the whole story, you wanted to be here for your entire career. Unfortunately, we already have a legitimate first line center in Austin Matthews. We can't have three $11 million players. I just can't do it. Unfortunately, we're going to have to say goodbye. Nico Heischer, are you coming to Toronto? Trade rejected. Okay. So they'd still, even with the first, that's still a lot for them. Okay. I see you. Um, what if I threw in a fourth? Is it just going to be that much to go through or are you going to want a lot more? The trade value seems relatively even. The fourth doesn't make it go through. I might have to throw in a pro prospect here which is fine because this is only a five-year franchise mode um rasmus sandin doesn't have a ton of trade value honestly uh this guy lazarev 20 years old 64 overall will that make it go through trade rejected it's just a bit low for us okay so we had a fourth this trade is going through i think i'm pretty sure let's try it out anyways we get a fourth, throw a fourth their way. Will this go through? John Tavares, are you going to New Jersey? Trick rejected, still a bit low. Okay, what if I made it a third? We're playing this game, are we? Okay. 
Now, I think it should be a rule. I shouldn't be able to trade picks past 2023 because this is going to be the cap for our franchise mode. It doesn't make sense for us to trade picks in years that we won't be here. So I'm kind of going to set a limit to it. What if I give you a third for next year, our first for this year, Lazarev and John Tavares for Nico Heischer? Still just a little bit low, hey? Okay, all right. What about if I made it a second? That's got to go through. Come on, New Jersey. Make the deal. Trade accepted. Oh, my God. I can't believe we just traded John Tavares. Oh, boy. We believe this transaction will contribute to our success here in New Jersey. John Tavares, good luck in Joyzy. Now, who do they take with our selection? They take Macaulay. There you go. All right, we did it. We traded John Tavares. I never thought this day would come. 20-year-old guy named Oscar Bang in the second round, a confirmed low elite. Hell yeah, I'm taking that all day. Thank you very much. Oscar Bang, 64 overall. All right, so really the draft doesn't matter. We all know this. We're at the point now. We haven't had basically any sort of involvement in the draft at all. We made our big move. We're still going to have some cap issues, to be honest with you. So let's get the draft over with here. Sim entire draft. I don't care. We made our selections. It's fine. Let's go into the re-sign stage. Trade alert. Jake McCabe is going to the Islanders. Okay. Another one. Uh, Detroit trades a second for a third. So they basically swap seconds and move up in the draft and get an additional third. Johansson and Ablocator. Wow, you got Minnesota to take on Ablocator's contract. Contract. Greasy, greasy move, Steve Eiserman. Okay, so John Tavares. Let's just quickly put this to bed. I feel like I've talked about it enough. We traded basically two roster players for one, and we save a little bit of cap. Is that a win? Let me know in the comments. I think it's basically a no-brainer. Now, with that being said, we have $22 million to work with. It's not a lot of money. It's seriously not a ton of money. But we have our top six all ready to go. Matthews, Marner, Landeskog. Nico Heischer jumped to an 89. He was an 85, like, literally three minutes ago. Okay, how you doing, Nico Heischer? Um, coach satisfaction, very high. Love to see that. There you go. Okay, Nico Heischer, my man, 89 overall. We have Nylander, Heischer, and Jesper Bratt. I'm banking on Jesper Bratt having a big year. We got Kreider, Timoshov, and Andreas Janssen on the third line. Um, and then we need a third line center, actually. We do need a third line center, actually. Chris Kreider might be the odd man. Now, that's $4 million bucks I could save. I could trade him for a really good third-line center. And then we could go with Timoshov, Andreas Janssen, and X player for the third-line centerman. Fourth line, we might not bring any of these guys back. I know our current cap situation isn't great right now, so let's worry about the fourth line in free agency. Uh, we might have to trade uh, Chris Kreider. I know it's like a budget cut thing. We might just have to do it, though. All right, Morgan Riley, how much money do you want? $11 million over six. Let's cut it a little bit down here. I know you're the captain. You're the man. Let's go 10.5 for six. Let's just shed a little bit of money there. Uh, he does want an extension, so he should say yes to that. Timothy Liljegren, let's go a little bit less, 4.75 for three. That's pretty low. Let's go 4.8. He is a restricted free agent, so worst case, worst case, we can send him a qualifying offer and deal with it in the offseason. That's the worst case. Um, what else we got here? Uh, Timoshov, he's cheap, right? He's two million bucks. That's such a good deal. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Zach Hyman, Derek Forbort, Schmaltz, Baptiste, all these guys we're going to worry about uh, in a couple of days. Basically, what I want to worry about is our starting goalie in Philip Grubauer because what does he want? Four, I think? Uh, five. 5.2 for five years. So, Let's see if Morgan Riley's gonna sign for the 10-5. Let's see if everyone else is gonna sign. Okay, Morgan Riley's here for 10-5. That's awesome. Timoshov's here to go. That's awesome. Timothy Liljegren is also good to go. All right, so we're moving quick here. We're doing big things. We have five million, 5.9, all right? $5.9 million to work with. And we're basically going to get our goalie and that's it. Um, 
he's definitely proven himself. He had a fantastic year last year. We could probably get him done for like 4.8. I feel very confident that Philip Grubauer can lead us to the promised land. Let's go 4.8 million bucks for five years. How about that? How about that, Philip Grubauer? You gotta work with me here. I got a very limited amount of cap space to work with. I need you to work with me. Uh, there you go, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Philip Grubauer is back for another five years. And we have $1.8 million to work with. Unfortunately, I think Kreider's gotta go. And we have a lot to work with. Oh my God. Okay, so $1.8 million to work with and basically 10 players we have to sign. I think Kreider's going to have to go for a third line center, which does make sense. We're going to go with Andreas Janssen and Timoshov as the wingers, and then we could just bring in Nick Baptiste and Freddy Gauthier and Trevor Moore for the fourth line. I think Zach Hyman and Derek Forbord are going to have to go. Um, yeah, let me sign the guys I need to, and then we will... Uh, We'll get to the bottom of it. So I basically can only give a contract to Frederick Gauthier, which I did. He's going to be confirmed our fourth line center. That's a million bucks right there. We're going to have to do some free agency magic here. So let's see. Let's figure this out. What the hell are we going to do here? Oh boy. So right now we have a surplus of bottom. Ooh, Phil Kessel is in free agency. Bring Phil Kessel back for a Stanley Cup run. No, that would never work. But there he is. He's going to cash in for the last couple years of his career. Only wants a two-year deal. That's kind of smart. It's actually an improvement I've seen from last year, NHL 19, is that like 35-year-old free agents will no longer want like $6 million deals, which is super smart. So that's awesome. He wants a two-year deal. This all makes sense. Um, what I'm looking for is a third-line center. Is there anyone out here? Anyone cheap? It doesn't really look like it. Uh, we might have to deal with this during a trade. That's fine. I can work with this via a trade. We're going to get $4 million cleared up. Ideally, what I would love to do is get a guy on his entry level who's making 700 k who's like 83 overall. We trade him for Chris Kreider. Boom, done. Everyone's happy. That's my goal here. Let's see what's out there. I know that's kind of an impossible task. Actually, let's have a look at how many goals Spezza had. He had 27. What a bounce back year. Went to Buffalo and had over 50 points as a 39 year old. What a guy. So I kind of want a guy like Henrik Borgstrom. He's making a million dollars. He's not gonna go anywhere because they have Trocek and Alexander Barkov. There's no room for him to grow. He's ideal for the third line. However, his face-offs kind of suck. Let me see if there's anyone else out there a little bit better, but that's the kind of player I'm looking for. Low 80s, making basically no money, like Luke Kunin. That's not bad. What's his face-offs? Only 70? Come on. I know the older you get, the better your face-offs get, so I can't be super picky. Uh, yes, Barry Kakaniemi, that's going to make us no money. Ooh, Ryan Paling, 78 overall for face-offs. His trade value is a little bit high. Nick Suzuki, um, he's a depth forward, 75 face-offs. Maybe I'm being a little bit too picky on the face-offs here. But again, we don't have a lot to trade because of the trade value being relatively low for Chris Kreider. So we can't be too picky, but we want someone who's going to be right for the job. Still got to keep looking. I'm sure something will come up. This is what I'm talking about. Clem Costin, a former first-round pick of the St. Louis Blues, 23 years old. He's got some tough competition ahead of him with Robert Thomas, Sammy Blay, obviously guys like Grandland and Ryan O'Reilly. This could be a guy that we could squeeze out of St. Louis. 83 overall, still on his entry level. That's definitely on the top of my list. Or even a guy like Jordan Cairo. All right, 80 overall for faceoffs. I really like this Clem Costin guy. 79 draws. He's young. He's huge. He's 6'3", 219. I think that might be our guy if there's nothing else out here. Yeah, I've had a look. There's a few options, but nothing quite as nice as Clem Costin here from the St. Louis Blues. Let's see what it's going to take to pry him out of St. Louis. Will this go through one for one? The trade value looks pretty even. We're going to be saving a lot of cap as well. How's their winger situation? Robbie Fabry is the only good left winger they have. 
Yeah, they could use some wingers. They could use a guy like Chris Kreider. Will this go through? Chris Kreider for Clem Costin? Trade rejected. Okay, I knew we are going to have to add a little bit. Again, I'm totally fine with adding picks here. We're at the stage at this franchise mode where we're going all in every single year. Clem Costin for Chris Kreider and a third trade accepted, baby. Thank you very much, St. Louis. Third line set, our second line set, our first line set, and we still have some money to spend. What a time to be alive. All right, so here's how the team looks as of right now. Our top nine is awesome. We need to get two fourth line wingers and we potentially need to get two bottom pairing defensemen. Barry and Dermot works out really well together. However, Dermot's overall is quite low, but I'm okay with it. I think I can work with that, but getting two depth defensemen is not gonna come cheap. Plus we need two fourth line wingers. You basically gotta get four players for like a million dollars each. So. Let's see what's out there. We're going way down here to the million dollar mark. I don't want to spend a lot, I'll tell you that. Here's going to be our first fourth line winger. It's going to be Big Bad Zach Cassian. Six foot whatever he is, 6'3", 209. He played in the American Hockey League last year. 90 body checking. This is a guy you need to win. Put him with Freddie Gauthier. Watch out NHL. All right, we'll give you the 1.3. Now for the other winger, I'd like to get someone who is maybe a little bit more skilled. Someone like, um, not Brian Boyle. There's actually quite a few options here. Jesper Fast, we can go back and get a legend from our Saskatchewan franchise mode, listed as a depth scorer. Jesper Fast wouldn't be bad. Um, played his whole career in New York. We could go get Jesper Fast. He's kind of the player I'm looking for, to be honest with you. Or a guy like Ryan Strom. Um, there's actually more options than I thought. You know what, I think bringing some skill to that line might not be a bad thing. Just over a million dollars for Jesper Fast. Come win a Stanley Cup in Toronto. So I'm trying to keep it under 1.5 for the both of them. Um, let's actually see what these guys sign for and then we'll see how much we actually have to spend. You're offering me Brady Shea for two firsts. I don't have that kind of cap. All right, Zach Cassian's here, and Jesper Fast is also on the fourth line. Our forward core is set. Now we have four million bucks. Okay, that's actually more than I thought. We have a decent amount of money here. Let's go affordable. First time I've ever used that tab in my life. I wouldn't mind bringing back like Jordan Schmaltz. He was great for us. He actually scored quite a few goals. I'm gonna go ahead and offer him a contract, 1.6 for three years. Um, let's. I'll give you 1.7 for one year. Just a one year deal, all right? I'm not out here handing out long-term deals. Um, Joe Hicketts is available. He's 78 overall. Might be able to spend a little bit more here on a guy like Strawman, who is a nice veteran presence on a really young defensive core. 35 years old, though. Alex Edler might not be a bad option. Ben Hutton, Robert Hegg, Derek Forbort. I mean, we might be able to bring him back. Yeah, we could probably bring we probably bring Derek Forbort back, actually. Let's do that. 2.5 million bucks. That's fine. Sign on the dotted line. 2.6. Might be getting some familiar faces back here. If that can be our last pairing as a defense, I'm pretty happy about that. Two familiar guys. I'm pretty cool with that. Derek Forbort said yes, and I'm sure that uh, Schmaltz is going to say yes as well. There you go. Talk about being a cap team. How much extra do we have? Less than a million, a little over a million, 1.5. We still got money to spend. Honestly, all jokes aside, I mean, trading the whole John Tavares thing is... I know I'm going to get hate for it no matter what, but it's it was a questionable move. It was a move that I think we had to make. We become a better team because of it. Instead of just having John Tavares, we now have a starting goalie. There's a big trade that went down. We now have a starting goalie. We now have Nico Heischer. I don't want Cody Ceci back. We have Jesper Bratt. We got to spend more money on more players. So I'm happy. Hopefully John Tavares does well in New Jersey, but uh, I'm happy with that. And I want you guys to let me know in the comments, did I make the right move there? Honestly, Considering how our team looks right now, I think we might be better off than what we were last year. This has been some of my finest GM work. It's time for us to name an assistant captain. John Tavares is all but gone. We have an A on Matthews. We have the C on Morgan Riley. Who gets the other A? Who gets it? Someone who's been here for a long time. 
Mitch, Willie, Zach Cassian's brand new. What do we do here? You know what? Let's give it to Mitch Marner. He's been here a long time. He deserves it. He's rocking the A. You love to see it. Now let's have a look at the lines. Now just for transparency's sake, I'm going to show you guys me turning on the, uh, where is it here? Sim scoring engine. We're gonna turn that back up to high just because it's more fun during the regular season. There you go. Just so we're all on the same page. All right, let's have a look at the roster here. This is my first look at it. I'm gonna need to change some things around obviously, but uh, who is Olsen? Why are you here? You should not be there. Brocco should not be there either. Ooh, look at Clem Costin, 84 overall. Quite the trade. All right, let me change some things around here. Uh, this is not how this is supposed to look. All right, so things are good to go. I like the look of this team. I love this second line. I think you're going to see big things with this second line. But look at the first line. Plus three, Marner, Matthews, Landy. You love to see it. Jesper Bratt, Nico Heischer, William Nylander. Timoshov, 84 overall. Entry-level contract, Klim Costin. We also have Andreas Janssen in there, the Mango Man, Jesper Fast, Freddy Gautier, but wait, I want to talk about this, and Zach Cassian. Love this line. Big, fast, and we still got some skill there. Oh, I didn't even mean to say that. Big and fast. That's just clever. You can't even teach that. That's just God working. Um, Jesper Fast, but Freddy Gautier, or do we go with Jeremy Brocco? who's 80 overall, brings some more skill to that line, but he's still listed as a depth forward. 25 years old, do we give him the shot over Freddy Gautier? You guys can let me know in the comments. As of right now, I'm going to scratch. I like Freddy Gautier personally. He's huge, he's a really good fourth line center. He's actually listed as a fourth liner. He has 85 draws, where I believe, if you look at Jeremy Brocco, he has 82. So still actually pretty good. He's more offensively minded though. 25 years old. He's finally made the jump to the NHL. You guys can let me know if that should be the case. As of right now, we're rocking with Freddie the Goat, Gautier, Djokovic, and Philip Grubauer. Kyle Olsen, who kind of came out of nowhere. I have no idea who this person is, but there he is. And then Jeremy Brocco, obviously. So now what I want to do is just do a little five game simulation as we usually do just for fun, starting things off. Big trade here from Boston. Couple of picks, Ian Scott, Yannick Weber, Canucks legend, no thank you. I can't believe we like made this all work. I'm actually very, I'm impressed. I'm a little bit nervous, but uh, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good here. So I wanna have a look at a couple teams here, New Jersey and St. Louis, obviously. Ooh, Phil Kessel goes to Anaheim. That's kind of fun. Um, let's have a look at those two teams. Let's see where they're playing John Tavares. He's obviously getting first line minutes with Hosang and Hall, Tavares and Hall, couple Toronto boys. They're playing this guy, who I can't pronounce his name, over McLeod. Interesting tactic, okay. And then the Blues, who are so deep at the center position, it made sense for them to move Klim Costin. And they play Kreider in a top six minute. So everyone wins in that trade. If you're gonna take away anything from this episode, it should be that the Chris Kreider trade was a really good trade. Do we have a game against New Jersey? We do at the end of the month and the Blues. Okay, we gotta get at least one month of simulation done. Just to end off the video, we gotta go with those two giant games. Let's go, game number one, we're not at home. We're at the Little Caesars Arena, Detroit, Michigan. No John Tavares. Welcome, Nico Heischer. Let's go, baby. Start this season off right. We're going deep in the postseason this year. I've had enough. GMX Tech is over it. I'm ready to go. Period. Number one. And it's 2 nothing. We started Najokovic. What the hell? Why does the computer do that? That's so annoying. I have injuries off. There's no way that he should get the start. Oh, game, you're the worst. We're out shooting him, but there you go. 2 nothing, 4-1. Landy gets the only goal, 6-3. to three. Matthews and Andreas Janssen. Why did we start our backup? Why does the game do this? Come on, man. I clearly had him in the starter position, and the game is like, nah, we'll just go ahead and throw, throw the backup in there for the first game of the year. Makes sense, right? 
Bunch of idiots, I tell you. Let's go all the way up to our home opener, and then I'll slow sim the game. I think it's against the Ducks on the 14th. Start off with a 4-3 win. There you go. We get in the winning column. Up against Phil Kessel and the Anaheim Ducks. That sounds weird. There's a couple Phil Kessel Toronto jerseys in the crowd. Period. Number one against the Ducks. It's 2-0. Landy gets both of them. 20-3 are the shots. Are you guys okay? Do you guys know there's a hockey game going on right now? Period. Number two. Okay, 3-1. Matthews gets one from center ice. Okay, and then Andre Kasha, he gets one. They only have ten shots. Oh, my God. F Philly. Philly cheesesteak. He gets the second goal on 13 shots. All right, Grubauer. Come on, man. you got to beat John Gibson here. 36 shots. He's standing on his head. Oh, my God. Austin Matthews. There you go, baby. That's going to be back-to-back -back Ws. Are they going to pull the goalie? There you go. Nico Heischer ices it from center ice. Our second center ice goal of the year. And Nico Heischer, which might be his first as a Toronto Maple Leaf. He gets us on the score sheet. There you go. All right. We'll go all the way up past the first month here. Up against the Blue Jackets once again, another win a week later. Doesn't matter, baby. Big W's, eight to one loss. Okay, all right. Uh, four and two to start off the year. We're tops of the division. Beat the Bruins, eight to three. We stuck it to them. Love to see that. I'm not interested in any minor league trades. Five nothing win. We are rolling right now. We're six and two. Four to one win. Here we go. Seven and two to start off the year. Do I hear eight and two? Absolutely, I do. Up against Chris Kreider, the six two and two St. Louis Blues. I'm honestly excited about this team. Period number one. Chris Kreider's in the building, and it's two two. Lots of goals. Kreider gets one. All right. Uh, Jesper Bratt, Marner, Tarasenko, Chris Kreider, and Bratt. The second liners score. The first liners score. Give me a third liner goal. Shots are pretty even going into the next twenty. 20 minutes there you go Austin Matthews it's a first liner come on boys we got this we're in the driver's seat Ganey he's that guy that they just drafted actually 33 25 are the shots come on you can beat Jordan Bennington here you can do it we're closing it on 40 but Lucas Raymond oh man they don't even have headshots these young guns for the st. Louis Blues are we gonna score a last second goal no the Blues they snap our winning streak hate to see it this is the big one, though. This is the big one. The return of John Tavares. No, this is not a game with the Islanders. It's a game with the New Jersey Devils. They're 4-5-1. and one. Oh, boy. Let's go. It's going to be an emotional one. We play the Devils in a couple weeks, actually, on the 22nd. So, going to see a lot of John Tavares. Nico Heischer, Jesper Bratt, playing your old team for the first time, period. Number one and it's three to one Tavares and Nita Ryder and the guy his name I can't pronounce Andreas Janssen gets one for them three goals on ten shots all right period number two four to two Michael McLeod and then Morgan Riley McLeod's getting fourth line minutes it's good for them to get a goal from the fourth liner power play you get one you're right back in this boys you can't end off on two losses in a row especially against two teams we should have won but Jack Hughes gets a power play goal and that's going to be two losses to end off the video you can't go out on a loss you can't do it i gotta end off on a win after winning four straight i think we lose two straight to two teams that i would have loved to get the victory against but up against buffalo are we gonna know we get a trade offer not interested how about a win i'll take a win over a trade offer three nothing shutout and that's where this one is going to end let's have a look around the league have a look at all the stats 18 points were tied with the halves for first in our division the avalanche are nine and one the oilers are ten and four so we're definitely up there up there with the up there with the elite austin matthews 16 points on the year landy with 14 marner with 14 klim costin with 13 a plus 10 how you doing buddy okay Jesper Pratt with 12, William Nylander with 12, Riley, Andreas Janssen. Actually, a lot of people producing here, which is great to see. Jesper Fast and Zach Cassian, Derek Forbort, Freddie Gauthier. We know those guys aren't going to score a ton, but when they do, they're always clutch. Philip Grubauer, 8-3-0 with one shutout, and the one game... And the one game that Nijokovic played was a shutout. 
which is weird because he had three shutouts in 10 wins last year and he's already up to an 83 overall so we could definitely have ourselves quite a one-two punch between the pipes uh let's have a look at how johnny t is doing here in new jersey he's got 12 and 12 so there you go and just because and of course we'll have a look at chris Kreider. he's got 9 and 13 so both teams seem to be benefiting from both of those trades oh my god tyler sagan have yourself a start to the year buddy almost a goal per game he's got 27 and 14 holy those are your top scorers have a look at rookies just for fun uh did that guy make it from arizona there he is actually five points in 14 games and i see here they have that other guy wong who's also a young up-and-coming centerman for the coyotes he's got 10 points in 14 games and then paulson for the new york islanders so what an episode i know when you see this title i know you're going to be kind of shocked but trading Tavares might be the thing that saves this team we basically got f like six players for the price of John Tavares when you really think about it we were able to do more things because we got rid of that 11 million dollar cap hit I don't really need to explain myself anymore I think you guys get the gist of it let me know how I did in the comments this is our year baby we're going all the way I need a cup for Toronto we only have two more cracks at this and then we're in the risk of becoming a failure we can't have that thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one